117. Conspiracies. Calcedon Position Paper, number 229, October 1998. Perhaps throughout all of history, there have been large numbers of people dedicated to the faith that history is dominated by secret conspiracies and groups. It is not that I doubt the existence of many such groups, but that I question their relevance. Man's basic problem is not a group of insiders, but himself and his revolt against God and God's law. Every attempt to localise the problem into some class, race or other conspiracy confuses the issue. Man is the problem. He is a sinner in revolt against God and God's law. He knows in his heart the consequences of breaking it, but break it he does and then he blames someone or something else for the results. He sees himself as the victim of a conspiracy, and he blames often some group, class, race or interest as the source of all his problems. Now, evil groups are real and plentiful enough, but there is more to the story than that. For example, recently a black woman judge was up for nomination to the federal bench. Testimony showed that in one case she had wept after a jury found guilty a defendant who had raped a ten-year-old child, saying, It's not that I think the rape did not occur, but five years is a lot of time, referring to the prison term. World, March 28, 1998, page 9. Under fire, this judge withdrew her name from the nomination process. Her character was known before her nomination by the President. Was her nomination a conspiracy? Or was it a sin? True, behind her nomination were racial motives. She was black, feminist hopes and more. But basic to it all was a lack of moral standards. A contempt for God's law. Any revolt against God's law is a sin and a form of rebellion against the king of creation and his kingdom. We trivialise sin and therefore life when we fail to see the true dimension of law-breaking, a war against God. We also trivialise God when we fail to see that all sin is a form of war against God. Because we do not want God to rule over us, we find every reason to limit the responsibility for the world's fallen estate. If we can limit it to a class, race or faction, we have placed ourselves in the camp of the saints merely by reclassification. It is an interesting fact that in a time of war, internal mental problems, suicides and ills decrease because we localise sin in the world's evils in a foreign enemy. By denying that all men are sinners without exception, save Jesus Christ, and that all men equally need his redemption. We falsify the human problem. We localise sin in a conspiracy rather than the whole human race. We then wage war against a group rather than seeking to become a new creation in Jesus Christ. We try to end the problem by redefinition 